Welcome to our second post for this season of Advent, the season in which we acclaim our faith in the God who comes. I greet you from Nungawal country and pay my respects to the first peoples and traditional custodians across our nation. As we did last week, we'll continue in the practice of lighting an Advent candle each week over the four-week journey of Advent. Our hope candle has already been lit. This week, we light a candle for the promise of peace that we have in Advent. Peace in our troubled world. Joining with the prayer of the psalmist, let us hear what God will speak, for God speaks peace to the people of God. A phrase often associated with Christmas it is, is that it is the season of peace and goodwill. This phrase has its origin in the biblical story of the birth of Jesus in which the song of the angels is said to acclaim that God wishes peace and goodwill for all the earth as they announce to the shepherds the birth of Jesus. I did an internet search on the words the season of peace and goodwill and I received 40 million responses. No, I didn't look at them all. I trusted the search engine counter for that number. However, I did look at a bit of a sample of the returned results and some of those were religious and some were not, but all of them had to do with the season of Christmas. The fact that this phrase is so strongly connected with the season of Christmas suggests that there is something about it which truly resonate, resonates with many people. But what is the peace that we celebrate in this season? And how can we acclaim Christmas to be the season of peace and goodwill in the midst of so many wars which plague our world and so many places in the world and in the agitation and the struggle many feel just coping with day-to-day -day living or the concerns that they hold for what the future will bring? The Hebrew poet who wrote Psalm 85 begins his psalm by talking about sins committed by his people and affirming God's grace and forgiveness. And the psalmist then continues to say, Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness look down from the sky. The psalm holds that peace and right relationships, righteousness, are intertwined. That's why the first part of the psalm focuses on abandoning sin and knowing God's forgiveness. Now, we tend to think of sin as doing wrong things, but it would be better to regard sin or understand sin as being completely self-absorbed with yourself and acting in such a way as to have no regard for the impact or consequences our actions may have on the lives of others or the world around us. As we think about sin too, it's also worthwhile to recognise that in talking about sin in general sense, we're also wanting to acknowledge the hurt and the anxiety and the struggles that we and others experience in, midst in, in the midst of the turmoil, unfairness, abuse and concerns which beset our world and our lives. These things also form part of sin. What is our experience, our struggles? See, acknowledging sin is not meant to lead to some sort of self-loathing or despair, but in fact to the sense of knowing grace and hope and also 
change in ourselves and in the world. Acknowledging sin also recognises how our relationships with God, with other people and with the planet are damaged and it seeks restoration of these relationships. The heart of our belief as Christians is that in Jesus, God has act, reaches out to humanity with grace, forgiveness and healing. In Jesus, God calls us to a new way of being, a new way of living as we seek God's commonwealth of peace in all things. Here lies the heart, the origins and the source of the peace and goodwill of the season. Peace which we know in restored relationship with God and with each other and with all creation. Peace that we know within ourselves through the experience of grace and healing and restoration in the restoration of these relationships. And finally, peace as we become agents working for peace in our world. The message of the angels was one of peace and goodwill. It is a message to be celebrated and a message which shapes our lives as followers of Jesus to be people of peace and goodwill. sadness lives and in times of struggle we come to God in prayer. Let's pray. All around we see humanity's best efforts like fading flowers wither and die. We know that too well the limitations of our being and so we look to you O God of peace for hope. God of peace may your peace fill our hearts and our world. There is so much that cries out for peace and hope in the midst and in the midst of this cry we lift our prayers for all scarred by the turmoil of violence. Bring comfort, healing and peace to all traumatised and grieving peoples. God of peace, may your peace fill our hearts and our world. 
when your ancient people were in captivity, you promised them their exile would end. We pray for all who live in exile from their homelands, their families, or their own inner strength. May they find places of shelter, of welcome, of strength. May they find that place, physical or within themselves, which they can call home. God of peace, may your peace fill our hearts and our world. The scriptures speak of you as one who gathers your people as a shepherd, soothing our fears, comforting our distress and guiding our way. Hear our cries of the heart for those dear to us and ourselves. God of peace, may your peace fill our hearts and our world. Grant us grace and wisdom to travel in faith the way Christ calls us to. That in us the peace and goodwill announced in the songs of the angels may touch the world in your grace. God of peace, may your peace fill our hearts and our world. Amen. The promise of Advent is of the God who comes. In the events and movements which shake our world and the simple unexpected moments that touch our soul, God comes and peace breaks in. So go as vessels of grace and agents of peace and know God's blessing upon you as God comes to you, that you may be God's blessing to others as God comes through you. Amen. Thank you.